A few weeks back, I did a video about setting up an input method editor on Linux because I needed to do Japanese input. So in this video, we're going to look at how to actually go and use it. Now, I'm going to be using FCITX and Mosk. If you're not using Mosk, I cannot guarantee that everything I say will be transferable. So I'd recommend going and using that one. If you're on Windows or Mac OS though, the Google input method editor is basically the same thing because Mosk was actually based on that project. Now I've heavily modified my key bindings and I'd recommend doing the same because when we go through this video, what I'm gonna do is show my key binding on the screen and the default key binding on the screen. Just so if you wanna follow along with my config or the default config, it's very easy to do. And if you wanna use my config, there'll be a link to my GitHub down below where you'll be able to find the file. Now the first choice you'll make when you're using Mosk is how you actually want to input characters, whether you want to do kana input or phonetic input. Now, I'd highly, highly suggest just doing phonetic input unless you have a Japanese keyboard. So phonetic input is basically where you type out the sounds and then it'll convert those sounds into the character they should be. So if I do something like say ko inu, that will then type out ko i and nu. Now if I had that on kana input instead, that would then type out the characters directly. But the problem with doing kana input is unless you have a Japanese keyboard, your layout may not perfectly conform to a Japanese keyboard and you might actually be missing characters. So if I press something like P, that should type out the character that would be in that spot on a Japanese layout. The other nice thing about phonetic input is you take advantage of your existing typing speed without having to learn a complete new keyboard layout. So we're gonna be working with phonetic input for the rest of this video. If you wanna do kana, I'm not gonna say that you can't do it, but I'd recommend against doing that. Now, Mosk is really well configured for phonetic input because it comes with multiple ways to type out the phonetic readings by default. You don't have to go and add them yourself. So for example, let's say you want to type out a character like Ko. So you can go and type that as K-O, or let's say instead you learned it as C-O. The same is true for doing the combo hiragana as well. So let's say we do something like uh, Jo. So in this case, I did J-Y-O, but you could also just go J-O, and that produces the exact same thing. If there are any spellings you use that are missing, what you can go and do is go into your configuration tool and go into the Ramaji table. And this is how you actually configure what the phonetic readings actually get converted into. So let's say that you didn't like that uh, CHA would give you CHA. What you can go and do is just go and delete that. Or let's say you wanted to add something new in there. Basically, all you do is just go add new entry and then go from there. And luckily, we can also go and import stuff as well. So so say there was someone else's modified version that you really liked, it would be really easy to get in here. Now one phonetic spelling that might slightly confuse you is if you want an N, the way you do that is with a double N. Now there is an easier way to do this. Let's say that you have an N in the middle of a word. So I'm just going to type out some garbage. So let's say there's a he here, and then you want an N right here. You don't actually have to press the second N here. What you can do is just keep typing the next part of the word and it will actually automatically convert that for you. Now the only part of the Romaji table which is really weirdly configured is for doing things like T or 2. By default it would be T apostrophe and then I or U. And there's a couple of others like that. I don't know why they're configured like that by default. But I'd recommend switching them over just so you don't make any mistakes when you're typing. Now for typing out a little two. The way we do that is we go and double type the first letter of the next character. So let's say we want to write out something like Mika. The way we're going to do that is M-I for me. And then we go and double type the K in Ka. And that's going to go and make that little suit for us. Now there is a way we can go and manually type this. But this is much easier in most situations. So to do that along with all of the other little characters. What we do is just prepend the way we'd normally type it with an L or an X. So if we do L and then tsu, then we get a little tsu. If we want a little e, the way we do that is L, E, and there's a little e. And that's another way you can handle it if you don't want to remap things like T. So what you can do is T, E for te, and then X, I gives you the little E. Now, up until this point, we've been working in the hiragana mode, where if you type out a phonetic reading, then it gets converted into hiragana rather than anything else. Now, you can go and work in other modes. However, I'd recommend keeping the hiragana mode as your default mode and then converting everything as a second step afterwards. So let's actually go and type something just in katakana, for example. So let's say America. Now, you don't just have to type in katakana. You could also do things like half-size katakana as well. I don't actually know when you go and use this, but it is an option there as well. Now, 
Now, if you just need to go and type something in English, unless you need to be formatted like Japanese text, I'd recommend just going and disabling your IME and then going from there. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier is that when you're typing, you're actually typing in sort of a buffer thing. And until you go and save that, it won't actually be, you know, properly saved in the thing you're writing in. So let's say I wanted to write out something like Noboru. Until I go and press enter in my case, that's not going to actually be saved in the document. At this point, we can go and type some other stuff and this text won't be affected. Now, the most important reason to use an I'm with Japanese is to be able to type out kanji. So in the case of Mosk, we have two ways to do conversion. We have prediction and conversion and we have straight conversion. So prediction and conversion is going to take your user history along with what you've written there and try to provide a better result along with ordering the list in a way that it makes sense inside of Moz because it's less likely to have a super rare kanji than one of the kanji that's used every single day. So let's say we type out something like uh, Noboru and we do a prediction and conversion here. So in this case, it's going to show the base form that we have. It's going to show up with this kanji here and this kanji here. Now, if none of these results are the result you want, you can go and keep tabbing and this will show you more results. And let's say we wanted to actually in the katakana form, for example, it's not going to show that as one of the base results because it's not likely that's the form you really want to convert it into. But if we go and type out something like, let's say, America, and now we try to do a prediction and conversion on it. In this case, the katakana form is going to be one of the first options. Now, generally, I would just do prediction because most of the time it's going to show you the result you actually want to see. The one advantage of just doing regular conversion is you don't have to convert the entire thing you've written out. So let's say we write out like, Ireru. Now, let's go and convert this and say we just actually want to convert the first two characters instead. So we can do a prediction conversion here or just a regular conversion on this. So I'm going to do prediction and conversion. Let's say we wanted it in... Uh, I don't know, this form right here, and then let's go and convert the next part, and we'll convert this into like this form right here. Now, most of the time you don't have to do this, but it is an option here if you do need to use it. Now, as for Japanese punctuation, all you need to do is type out the regular punctuation you would be using, and then convert it over. So let's say we want a period. So we can go and convert this, it'll show us all the forms this can be in. So let's say we pick this one right here, and let's do a comma, convert that one over we can pick this one here we want to do a tilde and that actually automatically converts it over for us but we can do other forms as well so let's say instead we wanted it to be in this form now if we go and type slash it's going to do this and we can convert this into other forms as well even things that aren't actually slashes like this right here for some reason i don't know why this is a thing if we want to do brackets once again the same is going to hold true as well we can go and convert those into other forms that we need them to be in a lot of the punctuation you won't have to use super often. One thing you will though is the long dash inside of a katakana word. So if you need that, just go and press your minus key. It will automatically make it. And once again, you can convert that into other forms as well. Like you can even convert it into a tilde if you need it to be that. Now Japanese input wouldn't be complete if it didn't come with some fun stuff as well. So we can actually go and type out some special characters by typing out special phrases. Let's say we type out maru. So that is the word for circle and it'll let you basically produce a circle or actually here's a fun one if we do uh chess or chessu this will actually let us type out various uh <laughs> various chess pieces i don't know why this is a thing but it exists or we could do things like say uh Arto, and that will let you type out a heart if you want a full list of these you can find various lists online here's one of them that i'll leave linked in the description down below i don't know if all of these work inside of mosk but you can definitely try them out and see what results you actually get. And speaking of fun things, if you type out kao, that will let you produce various forms of kaomoji. Now, if you don't know what kaomoji are, then you're definitely missing out. Basically, they are emoticons, but just much, much better. And likewise, if you type out emoji, that will bring up a list of emoji. So basically every single emoji that exists right now. I'm not going to go through the entire list. You've seen emoji before, but... It's a thing you can do as well. Now, I haven't gone over every single thing you can do with Mosk, but this should give you a good rundown to get yourself started. And then as you want to start modifying stuff and playing around with the other features, you should have a good baseline to work from. Thank you guys for watching. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to bring the list over to my main screen. 
Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David Monster, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Pity the Tony Tushar, uh, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, leave a pay, subscribe, start, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.